Hi there folks, my name is Nova Wing 24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your once location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 18th of August 2018 for, oh, 2018, I've just gone back in time, it's 2019 isn't it, there you go, okay, never mind, don't mind me folks, apparently I'm tired. So uh, we're going to jump straight into it because apparently I can't tell dates, uh, with the releases for 2019 uh, of the, starting with Explain 11, with the guys over at Tabare coming out with their rendition of Telluride. Now, um, okay, I, I, I'll be straight up. So Tabaray, I know very well for making mesh, but not so much for doing airports. Um, now, Telluride Airport is really kind of cool. Like, it's a it's a classic for anyone who's, especially for anyone who's been flying in the ESV platforms for a long time, but also a classic for anyone who enjoys the slope runways of X-Plane 11, um, because there has a dip in the middle of the runway. Like, it's very pronounced. Um, it's very difficult to model in the ESP platforms, but of course, X-Plane 11 specializes in having 3D runways. Um, so, the guys over Telluride, who normally do train mesh, they've come through and done their rendition of it, and from the look of it, they've captured the rolling hills that is is the runway at Telluride very well. But the rest of it I kind of question. So I noticed that, like, Telluride, as I said, they, they uh, sorry, Tabare, as I said, uh, very normally focus on um, sort of terrain mesh and ortho scenery rather than airports. So it's interesting, and they seem to have carried that that philosophy over onto this uh, this release. So it covers off a lot of the surrounding area. Um, they're very light on details about what's included there. I mean, li literally the description and the information I can get out of them was that, you know, it's uh, a new photographic texture ground coverage, including the slope runway of the airport and full auto, auto gen. So they, they've modeled the whole town um, of Telluride as well, um, as you know, deep in San Miguel County, and a lot of the mountains nearby have all been uh, covered with accurate photo reel. I said all custom terrain mesh throughout the whole thing, um, looking like 10 meter or better terrain mesh throughout the entire thing. So it looks pretty good, but at the same time, the airport itself seems to be done fairly basic. Like it's it's been updated, but yeah, it doesn't seem to have actually sort of gone a lot to it. But I may be wrong. So um, otherwise, yeah, they said the video looks pretty good. If you enjoyed low and slow flying um, in X111, this is probably one in low and slow mountain flying. This is probably going to be one that you may want to pick up. Uh, if you do want to pick it up, you can pick this one up for about 16 US dollars or your original equivalent. Available now from Sim Market. All right, moving on with other x 11 scenery releases this week. And the guys from the Juggernaut of Orbix has come out with a couple of things this week. The first one being um, their next in their True Earth series uh, for the US. So uh, with the release of True, S, uh, True Earth US Oregon. Now, um, interestingly enough, they've come this out in two versions. So um, as we sort of had them previously hinted with Washington State, that they'll be coming out with both a HD and an SD version. They've come out at launch with the HD and SD versions for Oregon. Um, so what do you get in the box? So essentially you get the entire state um, of Oregon um, with um, uh, with very high detail resolution photo imagery. Now with the HD version, you're looking at 1.2 meter per pixel um, ortho imagery and then it's a couple of lods lighter in the SD imagery. Now. There also includes a custom 10 meter terrain mesh is included based on LiDAR data, not just the old shuttle SRTM data, and a whole range of points of interest and VFR points of interest have been included or modeled in custom uh, custom 3D models for a variety of them, including full implementation of PBR texturing, as well as um, auto gen and sort of uh, geotypical auto gen for the region. Now, what's the difference between the SD and the HD, I hear you ask? Okay, so apart from about 10 bucks in difference in price, um, a significant amount of hard drive space is the difference. Um, so for, to put it into perspective, the HD version, as I said, is 1.2 meter per pixel uh, resolution for the HD, um, and that comes in at 230 gigabytes of hard drive space. Now, the SD version is 2.4 meter per pixel um, resolution, so, you know, about half, half the resolution, uh, and it only takes 63 gig of space. So, um, fairly significant <laughs> difference there in terms of hard drive space. Um, what's better for you? Well, it really kind of depends on what you're flying or how you're flying. If you're a low and slow flyer, then pretty much you have to get the HD one just 
straight up. If you're a high altitude flyer, not your tube liners, or you're a fast jet pilot, then probably the SD version will be perfectly fine. Now, interestingly enough, if you buy the HD version, you get the SD version for free included as well. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. So if you buy the SD and later on the HD, you're gonna pay an upgrade per fee. But if you buy the HD first, you got the HD and the SD and you can install them as you desire. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Otherwise, you're looking at, as I said, looking at about 45 US dollars for the HD version and 35, 36 US dollars um, for the SD version available now from Orbex. In another release for our X Plane 11, they also continue with their port over of other of their prepared content over of their ESP platform content over to X Plane with a release of Skagit International, sorry Skagit Regional Airport. I am absolutely certain I'm going to have plenty of viewers telling me that apparently I've just pronounced that wrong. Um, so this is in the Skagit Valley in uh, in. Um, Oh God, where is it? Uh, in Washington State, sorry. Um, <laughs> near the Cascade Mountains and the San Juan Islands. Um, it's a GA facility, single runway ops. Um, kind of cool, kind of quaint. Um, love the, the, the high, de high, high detail of this. There is no update to this. This is sort of as it was a few years ago. Um, as I said, it's a straight port over from the ESP version um, for that one. It has been blended uh, with True Earth US Washington, so it will work. It is designed to work with it, but can work without it. Um, you got about 100 square kilometers of uh, scenery uh, is included with custom autogen, uh, custom uh, photo reel as well. Uh, you also get included a secondary sort of uh, private strip, the W Whiskey November 51 Bayview Farm airstrip is also included as well. Uh, you also get custom animated traffic, custom trucks at nearby testing facility, and custom ground terrain, terrain mesh and polygons as well. So, uh, pretty standard content for this one coming in at uh, 22 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Orbex. Continuing with more scenery releases for X Plane 11. This time, uh, a double scenery release for free as well from the guys over at Vertical Sim Studios. Um, so they're continuing to expand their V States freeware collection by adding Arkansas and Kansas uh, to their collections. This comes through with 4K uh, handcrafted author imagery for each of the states in full. Um, so this is, uh, and it's funny actually, I've been talking with my friend Bill Giet about this, is in some ways we feel like they're re possibly reinventing the wheel here, because um, at the end of the day, like, you know, you can sort of do this yourself with, you know, or Ortho 4 XP, but um, the advantage of doing it from the guys uh, from Vertical Sim Studios, I believe, is the fact that they actually have got licensed actually imagery, which is far less likely to be um, have clouds. In fact, they claim over 97% of it is cloud free. Um, they've actually gone through and actually made sure they've removed all of the clouds where they could, and they've actually gone through and hand graded the color as well. So actually sort of update it, make it more real, true to life. So uh, looking kind of cool, the package is available for free from the Vertical Sim Studios web store, um, and then it's available via Google Drive link available now. Continuing on with more scenery releases, this is this time some more airports from the guys over at Two Pilots, which I do believe this is their first rendition and their first step into payware, the world payware world. Um, so this is from their release of um, Burgess Airport. Uh, so Burgess Airport um, is the uh, is a south, is an international airport in southeastern Bulgaria and the second largest airport in the country. Um, it's about uh, 10 minute, ten kilometers outside the city center. It serves a variety of international, uh, so European and Russian destinations, as well as servicing uh, the uh, tourist season during the various seaside resorts of the Bulgarian coast. Uh, so this is the airport uh, as, as it appears in uh, 20, end of 2018. Um, so it includes custom 3D objects for all custom 3D buildings, um, all modeled of the uh, current airport layout, um, including all passenger and cargo terminals, all infrastructure, including the, um, uh, I, I want to say it's an airplane graveyard, but it's not, but it's sort of like the, the display, the gate guardians at the front of the airport. That's all there as well. All, all of those have been modeled correctly. Um, also customized and optimized and uh, customized and accurate ground markings and stand markings for all of the gates as well. High resolution textures applied throughout, uh, designed to be compatible with Ortho 4 XP, 3D grass, custom uh, terrain, uh, custom polygons as well for the uh, airport as well and full implementation of night lighting as well. Uh, no word of whether it's PBR texturing or not and from the screenshots it 
doesn't look like it is, um, but otherwise still a pretty reasonably good looking scenery for this one. Um, though I question the scale of the stop signs, that's the only thing that I do question, but anyway. Uh, otherwise this one's available now, coming in at about 17 US dollars, or your regional equivalent, available from Sim Markets. Moving out of X Plane 11 and moving into the ESP world, the guys over at Sim Designs Co have actually come out with their um, again. I think I think this is a new developer as well. I, at least I don't recall seeing them anyway. Um, so this is their rendition of uh, La Nubia National Airport in Colombia. Um, so we don't see a lot of stuff from well we I suppose we do see some stuff from from South America but not a lot from Colombia. Uh, and this is actually a Colombian developer. So they're actually making their local airport. Um, so it's a fairly small airport, um, sort of with only a single um, with uh, single uh, runway operations. Um, however, they've actually um, uh, closed off one end of the runway due to urban sprawl, which is a very interesting. Um, sort of hazard that a lot of airports around the world are going to start facing as sort of development starts encroaching upon airports that traditionally have sort of been out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it's going to be very interesting as watching as they come on in the future. So it's interesting, as I said, that um, so landing ops on runway 28 and takeoff from runway uh, 10 are actually permanently um, uh, blocked and you can't do that anymore due to the actual um, urbanisation. So, hmm, interesting. Uh, talking point for another day, but anyway, uh, otherwise, what does this airport include? So this airport has been released uh, for uh, it's been released for FSX, FSX Steam. Uh, they have also released a prepared version as well, which looks to be the same price. Um, so you're looking at, uh, but the airport is as it appears at the start of 2019, um, including a variety of it's including all all airport buildings. Uh, airport layout, uh, including the terminal and the updated terminal and the waiting room, included with the han hangars and custom static aircraft for the area as well. Uh, full uh, full photo reel scenery for the airport and surrounding area, designed to be worked with FTX Global. Also includes a variety of visual um, uh, nav points and sort of visual points of interest as well, including the um, the, the cross on San Criano Hill and the main soccer stadium in town as well. So a lot of stuff there for your low and slow flyers as well. So you're looking at coming in at about 20 US dollars, which is a little bit high, I think, for, for the airport looking at it. Um, I think it's a little bit on the high side, but yeah, looking at the 20 US dollars for the FSX version or 20 dollars for a prepared version. Uh, you take your choice, available now from Sim Markets. Continuing on with other ESP releases, and this time a prepared V4 exclusive release. The guys over at Iron Sim have come out with their rendition of Vadso uh, Airport, which is a regional airport uh, servicing uh, the Vadso municipality in Norway. So uh, this airport is uh, sort of basically uh, operating in the middle of nowhere, as many airports in Norway are. Um, but actually, just, it's primarily uh, is home to a variety of um, uh, turboprop uh, aircraft and sort of variety of short uh, distance and sort of regional works coming through here. Uh, the airport is designed as uh, it does have seasonal photo reel available that you do have to custom actually switch. You can't actually um, get to actually do it. Do you actually don't uh, get to? Doesn't do it automatically. You have to do it manually yourself. Otherwise, the airport, as it appears, as laid out in 2019, uh, including the recent runway extension, you've also got the custom 3D objects, custom 3D models of all the airport buildings, full implementation of SODE so features, including the windsock as well, a variety of high-resolution ground textures for the airport and surrounding area, as I said, included as well. Full implementation on support of dynamic lighting systems, though it no mention of whether PBR is included for those who uh, follow such things. If y'all want to pick this one up, you're looking at picking this one up for about 14 US dollars or your rich equivalent available now. In another prepared V4 exclusive release, the guys over at Aerosoft and Simwings have teamed up again and releasing their rendition of Fairbanks Professional. So, uh, basically, again, just a reboot of their uh, previous Fairbanks um, air airport from Simwings from a few years ago. Um, this, I don't believe this is actually updated, so it's still the airport layout as appears at 2018, which is a bit disappointing. Yeah, again, it's one of my frustrations with this is that when uh, Aerosoft and, and Simwings have been doing these updates for Prepare Before their professional editions and re releases and whatever, it's been a shame that they haven't taken the opportunity to actually 
update the airport like that's a bit of a shame really but anyway that's a, an issue for another day um, otherwise as I said so this is a straight port over no modifications no changes just a straight update into prepared v4 uh, including adding new material so we do see some implementation of PBR as well uh, full uh, update of the ground polys as well so you do get that uh, sort of weather sheet coming there as well um, you get a variety of static aircraft static buildings uh, as I said not much has changed uh, it is designed to work with FDS global SDO jetways supported as well um, but the main thing is is that it works in prepared v4 now so eh, there you go that's pretty much it uh, so it's looking at 26 US dollars for um, new purchases if you're an existing owner of the old Fairbanks X um, you can update this one for around about 10 US dollars the instructions on how to upgrade are available on Aerosoft's website all right, continuing on with other ESP releases and moving into the mission world, the guys from Perfect Flight. Oh, I love reporting on these guys, don't I? Okay, so we've got a new um, a new mission pack has come out from then. Now, and I just want to say also is that the actual... I've got problem. I, I had more problems than usual with this pack, actually, funnily enough. So this is, the, this is called Perfect Flight FSX Missions Iberia... Boeing 747-400, okay. So it should have actually just been called FSX Missions Iberia Missions because it's not just the 747-400 missions that are in here. Um, it, it also includes air, uh, ones for the A321, uh, the CRJ-700, and the A350, I believe, as well. Um, my issues with some of this stuff, though, is... Um, uh, again, like I say with a lot of perfect flight stuff that I've seen before, is the fact that... Um, okay, so again, it's fully compatible with FSX, FSX Team, and Lockheed Martin's prepared. Um, and all they have done is they've simply grabbed the Microsoft FSX Default 747, um, A321, CRJ, and, and just simply dump them into the sim. Um, I don't know whose A350 it is. I don't. I, there are no screenshots, interestingly enough, of the A350, um, which concerns me because it makes me wonder if they've simply just aliased the A321's cockpit to the an A350 external model. Um, as I said, it's they're, they're just a bunch of they're a bunch of safe flights. They're, they're unstructured scenarios. They're just a bunch of safe flights. Point A to point B. Usual stuff that we see from the again the copy paste that we see from Perfect Flight, which is the um, passenger entertainment system, entertainment system. So mission also features the exclusive passenger entertainment systems with five new and unreleased soundtracks, fully customizable with your own soundtracks. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, uh, you know their special feature, which allows you to use a plane of your own choice instead of the included fleet. It's like, you, it's not special features, it's just a load mission is what it is, but anyway. Uh, anyway, moving on, uh, so yeah, GFWS callouts, blah, 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 I'm just going to let this one slide. If you wanted to, but as I said, it's kind of frustrating for me as someone who creates scenarios. Anyway, uh, so you're looking at 12 US dollars or your original equivalent available now <laughs> if you want to pick it up. All right, moving out of scenarios and moving into aircraft releases. So this one is a, I, I, it's, it's, it's a, it's a prepared V4 release, this one. So the guys are at Iris Simulations, who we haven't really heard from for quite a while. Um, they're coming back in sort of, they're starting to poke their way back into the community lately. They've been doing a few live streams uh, for anyone who's been missing their thing. Uh, have a look on their Facebook page. I'm doing a couple of live streams lately of some of their products. Um, and they've been doing a bit of a, a overhaul. So um, they just rebooted their uh, previous Pilatus PC21 product with the release this week of the 21 driver. Um, now, interestingly enough, um, they'd actually had a PC21 product previously. Um, and it's gone through a couple of iterations over the years. And then it disappeared from their stores. Um, both from Iris' store and from all other redistributors, um, it sort of mysteriously disappeared. Nobody's really sure why. Um, and it's, but it's come back, but it's come back renamed, and it was interesting therefore that it's come back as renamed as the 21 Driver. Um, now this come through as come through as an update is designed, and this one is now fully functional and designed and implemented to work for provide v, prepared 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 v4, um, as well as still supporting backwards compatibility at to FSX and lower versions of prepared. Um, includes custom sound pack based on the PT6 engine, uh, updated flight model, um, 
updated uh, and sort of brand new textures at all in 4K resolutions, custom paint kits included, state of the art lighting techniques. And can I also just say, there's a couple of really cool, interesting things about this as well. Um, the developers actually obviously really enjoying Tomato Shade because he's actually included um, Tomato Shade specific models. So if you want to do it, and he's recommended um, uh, preset, lighting preset as well. So that's kind of cool, kind of interesting that I've never seen or heard of a developer actually putting in the the pre-done, pre-modified models for, for Tomato Shade in a release. So it's kind of cool they did that. Um, otherwise, so this is, a, this is a brand new product. You're looking at uh, to about 30 Australian dollars, so about 25, 20, 25 US dollars for this one, available from the Iris store. Um, but if you are a previous owner of the any of the previous versions of, of the PC21 from Iris, so whether it was the original PC21 release or the 75th anniversary edition uh, product, uh, this is a free update. Uh, for you guys. So just log into your Iris uh, store or log into the store of your um, re uh, redistributor that you purchased it from and you'll be able to get your updated um, installer available now. And another aircraft release this week. The guys over at Carinado have come out with their Shorts 330 this week for the ESP platforms. Um, now, the Shorts 330 was the baby version of the Shorts 360, or maybe the Shorts 360 was the bigger version of Shorts 330. I can't remember. Um, so this is a twin turboprop um, passenger aircraft and freight aircraft um, designed by the Shorts brothers of the United Kingdom. Uh, was would serve a lot of in a lot of roles as very much a a, a stall sort of transport one. So it had a lot of uh, excellent stall performance and a lot of good performance in hot and high conditions which makes it very very popular uh, in areas of mountain flying and where uh, obviously where short runways are of a absolute requirement um, so this one comes through a full invitation with a highly detailed 3d model uh, of the aircraft with dynamic cockpit annotations a custom and optimized flight model based off real pilot real information uh, full implementation of uh, 4k textures throughout all full implementation of the custom autopilot that serves with the original aircraft it does however also support uh, the flight one gtn 750 and the reality xp 750 integration as well uh, and a slew of other features that we've also seen from carinado as well so looking pretty cool I've always liked the shorts 330 and 360. Um, there was always a colloquialism back in the day that the shorts 360 was the uh, the box the Learjet came in, uh, and this was sort of like the box the spare parts came in. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, it comes through a whole sort of high tech, just looking beautiful, available for the whole full suite of ESP platforms from prepare from FSX all the way through to Prepare V4 and above, available now for 40 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now. All right, moving out of the ESP platforms and moving in to Aerofly FS2. The guys from Tabaray making another appearance this week uh, with their release of the terrain mesh for Nepal, Nepal and Bhutan. So, um, now, okay, so I, I want to be buy beware on this product straight up. So recently we saw the release, um, Aerofly released uh, their rendition of Lukla Airport for Aerofly FS2. But one thing we don't have, we don't have photo... It's, okay, so this is one thing I don't like. Okay, well, i got mixed feelings about Aerofly FS2 is that if you want a region, you have to buy it. Or you have to find a way of implementing your own um, photoreal scenery. Um, which can be done. It's not easy, but it, it's not as easy as it is, as it is for Ortho, for XP, for x 11. Um, but, you know, it, it is possible that it was a bit of work. So what this is, this is the terrain mesh for Nepal and Bhutan, um, including, of course, obviously Mount Everest is included in here as well. Um, now, but no photoreal textures are included. So if you want textures on you and not just the sort of green mess that is the, the sort of the underlying texture in um, Aerofly for Sue, then you are going to need to actually look into the SDK and look at getting at how to create your own uh, photoreal textures for Aerofly FS2. So just be aware of that. All you're buying is a train mesh. Although these, the video that you're watching is the promo video from, T from Tabaray, it looks beautiful. Um, you don't get that. You get the, the peaks and troughs, you don't get the scenery. So just Buyer beware of that one, just so we're very clear on that one. Uh, but otherwise, if you want to pick this one up, it's coming in um, for 16 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Sim Market. 
moving out of the flight sim world and moving on to ground level and into the dirt with the release of guys of Dirt Rally 2 releasing their latest rally cross track this week uh, with the release of Estering Track in Germany. Um, so it first hosted it right, its first rally cross event in 1972 and uh, character, characterized by its thick gravel sections, difficult joker lap and high speed straight. Uh, one of the few places where rally cross cars can actually reach their top speed, which is one of those things about rally cross is that it's fast, but you actually never get to see them at their flat out fast speed because they're always going around corners. So yeah, there you go. Um, so this one's coming in uh, at pretty standard price, coming in at four US dollars, um, available via the My Team FIA World Rally Cross Championship, Custom Championships, and Time Trial sections of Dirt Rally 2.0, available now on Steam. And for non-Steam users, available on your console of choice. It's moving, staying at ground level, moving out of the dirt and moving into something uh, more sedate where there's obviously two Sura released this week. And, and I'm just going to call this one out and say this release is complete BS. Um, I've got a huge problem with this release. So this this week we saw the release from obviously two of Master Bus Gen 3 pack. Now, on the surface, it looks like a very high quality and amazing pack. And, and especially considering the price tag, you know, 15 US dollars. Um, so on the surface, when you first read it, it looks amazing. Like it looks, it's, it's a, you've got the highly accurate renditions of the right Gemini 3 series of buses um, that, you know, you're going to have like, it's it's got 15 different bottles of muscle, bu uh, models of buses listed here. You've got the Street Deck 10.5 and 11.5. You've got the Volvo B5 TL, LH and um, Open Top TL in th in two different lengths, 10.5 and 11.5. And you've got Classic Body Works on those three versions of those three buses as well. You've got the Street Deck HEV, Dublin Bus Bodied, um, HEV and B5 TL and London spec versions of um, a couple of those as well and you've got a full implementation of a licensed Ticketer machine by Ticketer UK um, high degree of customizability you can sort of set your different glass ticket machines wheel arches um, colour schemes like whole host sort of stuff then there's the fine print down the bottom of the description which is not all buses shown are contained in the pack you can expect them in future dlc packs and initial release will contain each of the uh, so will contain the right gemini 3 series of buses street deck refit lh in two lengths um and then in the details and it says the street deck 10.5 is feature complete but nothing else is. What the hell, Aerosoft? Like, what the hell? Is is this a beta? Is this an alpha? Is this a complete product? Is this just you trying to rip the community off? Because what I'm reading here tends to suggest to me that I might get three buses of which one is actually complete and the others I may have to buy later. I may not, or I may never actually get them. Can you figure your proverbial out, please? Because this is not okay. This is not okay. Uh, like it's just flat out not. Like I'm not. I'm not a, okay. I, I don't. I don't play OMC two, but I know a lot of people who do. Um, and this is just not this is just not treating the community well at all and i just wanted to call that out because yeah i'm calling you out master switch studios and aerosoft because i think you should I, I personally think you should pull this from sale until you figure it out or if it's only going to be a partially complete then you tag it as early access and tell people it's not bloody complete because this is disgusting so this can be picked up if you are willing to risk it. You can pick this up for 15 US dollars available from either Steam or Aerosol's website available now. Continuing on with public transportation, but moving into the permanent way with Train Sim World releasing their latest uh, DLC this week with the release of Peninsula Corridor San Francisco to San Jose route. So, do you know the the way to San Jose? Uh, and in Train World, Train Sim World, you now can thanks to this DLC. Um, so, this is a uh, feature add-on um, for Train Sim World heading from the uh, Gold, heading to the Golden State via the Peninsula Corridor. Um, you get a 
beautiful, highly detailed uh, train in here, a couple of trains in here as well, uh, as well as highly detailed amount, 47 miles of route heading between San Francisco and San Jose. Uh, you get 26 Caltrain stations. Um, you've got a variety of rolling stock. Uh, you get the uh, F40 PH2 Cat in Caltrain livery. You get the GP38 2 Road Switcher in Union Pacific livery. And you get a variety of rolling stock, including uh, gallery cars, cab car, uh, two bay aggregate hopper cars, and center beam flat cars are all included as well. A uh, whole slew of highly uh, detailed and high definition sound sets included. A variety of co over 100 collectibles included and tutorials um, of the F40 PH2 cat, GP38 2 and cab car all included as well. A 24 hour service mode timetable is included with this as well. So pretty highly detailed, looking pretty awesome. Uh, currently uh, normally available for uh, 30 US dollars, currently on a launch special for 27 US dollars available now on Steam. And finally rounding out the Nova app for this week with, oh dear God, why do I report on this stuff? I don't know. Oh, so I, I feel like every every week I do this video, I, I feel that there is just something that just wears me down. And, and this week, I saw something that I just shook my head in awe and could not believe that this was actually a thing. Um, so this week in the simulation genre, I saw the release of Robot Vacuum Simulator X. Oh. <sighs> Okay, I all I can do this is and it's not even a new game. This is a re this is <laughs> this is a sequel. This is a sequel to Robot Vacuum Simulator 2013. The fact that there was even a Robot Vacuum Simulator 2013 disturbs me. Moving on, um this is an exploration into the depths of robotic vacuum cleaning simulation. This game delves where no game has delved before. I'm just, I can't, so I'm just reading, I'm reading the product description to you because I just can't. Um, okay, it is the most realistic <laughs> robot vacuum cleaning simulator ever. I'm waiting for them to stay study level, I really am. Features of this monstrosity uh, is unprecedented scale. Vacuum Tech X, patent pending, a technology that truly redefines what and how you vacuum. Uh, it has scientifically correct levels. It has several types of dust so that every suction is different. It has local co-op multiplayer. Don't even want to ask. And it is a riveting story of love, loss, and suction. I'm done. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm out. Um, five bucks on Steam if you want it. Good luck to you. If somebody gets it, please send me a screenshot. Anyway, all right, that does wrap up the Nova Wrap for this week, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. Before I go, just to let you know, there will be no Nova Wrap uh, for the next two weeks. Um, so I am heading off. I'm actually heading off to the U.S., uh, so I am racing, um, so I'm heading over to the uh, inaugural uh, Ironman 70.3 in Traverse City in Michigan, uh, the cherry capital of the world. I will be uh, competing there uh, next Sunday, so uh, have a look out uh, my uh, bib number. And if you guys want to track me or whatever, I'll put the link in the, uh, the uh, thing up on the screen at the moment. Uh, so if you're bored and you want to track me on Sunday, you can. Uh, otherwise, as I said, uh, yeah, I said I'll be out of contact for that one. And then the uh, following Saturday, uh, the following Sunday, I will still be in transit as well. So um, I'll still be in the US and uh, getting back the following week. So um, spending some time with the family. So uh, just to, yeah, just to let your folks know that there will be no Nova for the next two weeks. Um, uh, thank you very much for your support. Uh, there will still be some other videos that I've pre-done and pre-made, and they'll be being released periodically over the, the time I'm away on the channel. Um, so there will still be content coming out there'll be just no news content coming out uh, but don't forget to head over to the guys over at Heli Simmer for those who are into frantic palm tree news um, Heli Simmer has been releasing our weekly uh, news uh, sort of uh, release wrap as well so have a look for that one as well all right folks uh, as I said that doesn't wrap up the, Nova, the wrap up the Nova wrap for this week thank you very much for joining me don't forget as always do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos and want to see more and of course as always you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter just search no 24 all right folks thanks very much for watching take care safe skies to all and we'll see you next time bye for now